Welcome to our worship service. We are glad each and every single one of you is here with us this morning. Please take a moment to look at your bulletin. A couple things to point out. The Wednesday morning Bible study concludes this week. So that will be wrapping up this coming Wednesday. And Easter services, uh, Thursday and Friday are at 7.30. Friday evening, or actually Friday all day, is a prayer vigil. So if you would like to participate in that, everybody's welcome. But we just ask that you sign up. We'd like to get every time slot covered um, starting in the morning and continuing out right up until this service starts at 7.30. So if you're able to, please sign up on the sheet as you enter slash exit the church. 7.30 Thursday, Friday, Sunday morning, 8.30 service and 10.30 service with breakfast in between. So we hope to see all of you there. Are there any other announcements? Okay. All right, then let's continue on. Let us prepare our hearts and our minds for worship as I read from Isaiah. I am the Lord. That is my name. I give my glory to no other, nor my praise to idols. See, the former things have come to pass, and new things I now declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. Morning. Good morning. Those who are able, would you please rise and join me in the call to worship? Let the same mind that was in, be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that Jesus every knee should bend in heavens and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess 
that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. be seated and join together in the prayer of confession. Lord God, on this day we remember Jesus' entrance into the rebellious city of Jerusalem where he was both lauded and rejected. We confess that we too can be rebellious, lacking in true trust. Cleanse our hearts. Have mercy upon us, Son of David, Savior. Assist us to lay your feet all that we have and all that we are, trusting in you for forgiveness and grace. Heal our brokenness and cleanse us as our own. We pray this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Will you give signs of peace and hope to those closest around you? Would you please be seated? Children, would you come forward? Bring your palms with you, please.
All right, someone already made a cross out of it. That is phenomenal. One of these days I'll learn how to do that. Annie, was that you? Okay. Okay. Good morning. Now, how many of you have a favorite sports team? Congregation, you can raise your hands too. Now, the thing about being a fan, what's my favorite team, Zoe? Okay, thank you. So the thing about being a fan is we can be finicky, right? If they're winning, sorry about that, Drew. Maybe they'll start winning the Jets. But if your team is winning and they win the Super Bowl, things are going great, right? You might cheer a little louder. You might cheer a little harder because your team is the best. Wow. Wow. Okay. Well, well, Theo, it's a long story. It's a long story. Well, I was really happy in 2018, okay, when the team, but when your favorite team is winning, things are going right, great, right? You're cheering louder, you're cheering harder, but what happens when your team starts losing, right? What happens when your favorite team starts losing? Maybe you're not cheering as loud, maybe you're not cheering as hard, so, well, I need a lot of cheering, right? But your cheers turn to jeers, right? You're, at one time, you're cheering, and the next time, maybe you're not cheering, maybe it's, you know, you're what they call jeering, right? You're happy one moment, you're sad the next, right? Well, something like being a finicky sports fan happened to Jesus, okay? Uh, Jesus had people cheering for him at one moment, and then later in the week, they were saying some nasty things about him. So you see these palms, hold your palms up, okay? Uh, these are branches from what kind of tree? All right, a palm tree, right? Now, in the country, the time when Jesus lived, there were a lot of palm trees. Okay, there were a lot of palm trees around. And these right here were a symbol of victory. Okay, they were a symbol of joy. Okay? And so, people during Jesus' time, wave your branches. Wave your branches above your head. So, if someone famous was coming into town, people would wave their branches as a sign of joy, Right? As a sign of celebration, whenever a famous or an important person rode into town on a horse, people were doing what? They were waving their branches back and forth, right? And on the Sunday before Jesus was crucified, people were waving their branches. Do you remember what Jesus was riding on? He didn't ride on a horse. He was riding on a donkey, right? On the small back of a donkey, he was riding, and people were waving their branches, right? They were saying, Hosanna, son of David, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, right? They were cheering Jesus as their king, okay? That was on a Sunday, but just a few days later on a Thursday, do you know what happened? Jesus had his last meal, and then on five days later on a Friday, what happened to Jesus? He died, right? So... People were cheering on Sunday, wave your branches. They were cheering at him one moment, and then the next moment, some of those same people that waved their palms, you know what they were doing? They were screaming for Jesus to be crucified. And he was hanging, Jesus was hung on a cross, right? So the same people that were cheering at one moment were calling for Jesus to be killed the next moment, right? So, and you know what was weird is, is there was a person, can you say this name, say this name, Pontius Pilate. Okay, he was talking to a crowd of people, and you know what he said? He said, I will free one person. Well, thank you. But listen, listen here. So, Pontius Pilate asked the people to make a choice. They said, we can free Jesus, who we don't think did anything wrong, or you can freed one of these other criminals. Do you know what the people chose? They chose one of the criminals to be released instead of Jesus. So that's why Jesus was hung on a cross, because people said that they wanted him, okay, hung on a cross. So let's remember these palms today, right, as a sign of celebration of Jesus. But later in the week, we've got to remember the hard times that Jesus went through only to be resurrected from the dead on Easter morning. Let us pray. 
Jesus, we thank you so much. We thank you for willingly giving your life for all of us. I thank you for these children. I thank you for their families. I thank you for this entire congregation. Help us today to choose to make you king and Lord of our life. Help us to be strong. Help us to follow you, even when anybody and everybody around us have forsaken you. Help us to stay true to you and follow you to the end. In Jesus' name we pray, and everyone said, Amen. Psalm 118 is traditionally read on this Palm Passion Sunday. And so today, Kathy will read it to us, but from time to time, she will stop and pause. And after a short pause, she will say, give thanks. And we as a congregation then will respond by saying, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. So she will read a portion, pause, and say, give thanks. And we then together will respond, and then she will continue with the next section. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Give thanks. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Let Israel say, his steadfast love endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say, the steadfast love endures for love forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, his steadfast love endures forever. Out of my distress, I called on the Lord, and the Lord answered me and set me in a broad place. With the Lord on my side, I do not fear. What can mortals do to me? Give thanks. Oh, thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. The Lord is on my side to help me, so I shall look in triumph on those who hate me. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to put confidence in mortals. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to put confidence in princes. All the nations surrounded me, and in the name of the Lord, I cut them off. They surrounded me, surrounded me on every side. In the name of the Lord, I cut them off. They surrounded me like bees, they blaze with the fire of thorns. In the name of the Lord, I cut them off. Give thanks. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. I was pushed hard so that I was falling, but the Lord helped me. The Lord is my strength and might. He has become my salvation. There are glad songs of victory in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. I shall not die, but I shall live and recount the deeds of the Lord. The Lord has put, punished me severely, but he di did not give me over to death. Give thanks. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Open to me the gates of the righteousness, that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter it. I thank you, for you have answered me and become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected have become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Save us, we beseech you, O Lord. O Lord, 
we beseech you, give us success. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. Give thanks. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. The Lord is good. The, excuse me. The Lord is God, and he has given us light. Bind the festal procession with branches up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will give thanks to you. You are my God, and exalt you. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Give thanks. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. reading from according to Matthew. And we believe that there was a Matthean community in which this document was written so that they might experience and know firsthand what had been reported about the life and teachings of Jesus. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples saying to them, go into the village ahead of you and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone asks anything of you, just say this, the Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, look, your king has come to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt, the fall of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went, went ahead of them and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna 
in the highest heaven. When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, what is this? The crowds were saying, this is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. Then Jesus entered the temple and drove out all who were selling and buying in the temple. And he overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who sold doves. He said to them, it is written, my house shall be called a house of prayer, but you are making a den of robbers. The blind and the lame came to him in the temple and he cured them. But when the chief priests and the scribes saw the amazing things that he did and heard the children crying out in the temple, Hosanna to the son of David, they became angry and said to him, do you hear what they are saying? And Jesus said to them, yes, I have, I have heard. Out of the depths of infants and nursing babies, you have prepared a praise for yourselves. And let them who went out of the city of Jerusalem and spent the night there. This is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Would you please be seated? Joan, thank you for leading that choir in what was a beautiful anthem. We are so grateful to each and every one of our choir members for lifting us up on this a special day. Would you please be prayerful with me? tender and compassionate God, we, your children, come with feeble attempts to understand, to proclaim, and to follow Jesus. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of each and every one of our hearts be acceptable unto you. And if you, O oh God, would take the foolishness of this, your servant, and translate his words into real and livable lessons for each and every one of us, we would be grateful. For this we do pray in Jesus' name, amen. Having lived and pastored in Florida, having had palm trees in my front yard and branches that fell down that the trash men would not take, Neither would they burn well, and woe to the person who put him into the dumpster. I should have gotten the idea that I could take them apart and sell them to northerners. <laughs> A daughter texts her dad, texting, Daddy, I'm coming home to get married soon. So get your checkbook ready, LOL. As you know, I'm in Australia and he's in the United States of America. We met on a dating site, became friends on Facebook and had long chats on WhatsApp. He proposed to me on Skype and now we have had a two-month relationship on Viber. Dad, I need your blessing, good wishes, and a really big wedding. Lots of love, Lily. The dad texts back. My dear Lily, like, wow, really? Cool. Whatever, I suggest the two of you get married on Twitter, have fun on Tango, 
register for your stuff on Amazon and pay through it all with PayPal. And when you get fed up and tired of your new husband, you can sell him on eBay. <laughs> Isn't that how life has become? You know? From across the lands, people gathered for Passover, an annual pilgrimage expedition into Jerusalem. It was like a harvest home holiday, if you wish, with people coming from all different sections where many languages were spoken and many, many traditions came together to bring about the passage of the celebration of Passover, a remembrance when the death angel passed over the Israeli households in Egypt when the eldest of each household was to be smitten in Egyptian households and that doorpost was stained with the, with the blood of a sacrificed animal to ward off the angel. All of those traditions that they had carried with them orally from one generation to the other is another generation, actually got mixed together with the Philistine and Canaanite traditions too. And so here they were in Jerusalem. And the story continues that on that Sunday, that Palm Sunday, that Passion Sunday of Holy Week, Jerusalem's many occasions had entered and over year after year, many notorious people had entered victoriously, humbly, and some unseen. Some seen of Jesus entering on a borrowed colt and donkey gives us an indication of the humility with which he approached the entire situation an itinerant preacher coming not with fanfare, but to bring a message, another message. Jesus would have seemed politically weak, if you will. About the same time on the western side of the city, mounted on a horse with all kinds of entourage, came Pontius Pilate, king and governor of that area, to keep everyone in check on behalf of the Roman Empire. And so here we have, on one side of the city, Pontius Pilate seated upon a horse in which no king of Israel was ever to ride into the city on a horse, but come in humility to lead the people. That is what Jesus did. And so we have the clash of two kingdoms, if you will, the kingdom that Pontius Pilate would reign, and then the invisible kingdom of the reign of God amongst the people, about which Jesus was to always announce at every moment. The whole place wanted to know, who, who is this? The children, the children answered that song, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest, he is the one that comes in the name of the Lord. He is the one that makes the blind to see, the lame to speak, the deaf to hear. He is the one that transforms lives. The children got it. About like they tried to get you this morning. <laughs> Eagles. Eagles. When I pastored in Miami, they gave me a lesson of what the, the dolphins were and what all the other ones were too, because they said I was sports-wise stupid. <laughs> I am. Your children knew, and these children knew too. For the children got it. And Jesus then found himself. Everything abruptly changes. He rides in. He dismounts. It's already late. He goes into the temple. And there he finds people buying and selling. 
exchanging, the money changers taking people's currency that had the image of the emperor from wherever they came from and changing it for temple currency and charging for it too. And he said to them, it is written, my house shall be called a house of prayer, but you are making a den of thieves. And we are told that after he said that, he healed, he included the children, and they listened to him. The voice of heaven rings. We worship here, not in a temple. We worship in a house of prayer, built by human hands, paid for by many of you, lovingly cared for week after week after week. It is a place of prayer. And so everything we do here, everything we do here is reminiscent of Jesus saying, my house shall be a house of prayer. And we measure everything that happens in this building by that test. Oh, I love the song, sweet hour of prayer, Sweet hour of prayer that calls me from a world of care and bids me at my Father's throne make all my wants and wishes known in seasons of distress and grief my soul has often found relief and oft escaped the tempter's snare by thy return, sweet hour of prayer. When Jesus was in the transfiguration on the mountain, with Peter, Paul, and John, Peter, John, and James, excuse me, there was a great voice that came from heaven saying, this is my beloved son, listen to him. And so we take that today and we listen to his words that this is supposed to be a place of prayer and everything we do here is measured by that. And all that happens inside these walls on this property are to be done prayerfully as a congregation praying. Houses of prayer were once highly regarded and respected, and yet I'm afraid so many have been desecrated. Oh, not by thieves that jump through the walls and pray paint on the inside, but by squabbles that happen inside of one candle being higher than the other or the communion elements not being put in the right place, or a mistake made in the bulletin. It all robs of a house of prayer. I'm afraid that many have fallen, not from the outside, but from the inside. And so therefore, if we take Jesus seriously on this Palm Sunday, and we say, yes, we're gonna believe what he had to say when he got into the, into the city, he is asking us for harmony, for inclusiveness, to keep disputes at bay, for leaving egos, if you will, outside and making sure that everyone's prayers are on an even footing here. And so Jesus' words stand the test of time. So maybe we could rewrite those words so they could say, sweet place, of prayer, sweet place of prayer, thy walls, how holy a place to share, and bids us at our Father's throne make all our wants and wishes known. We are then to take our house of prayer to our own homes. 
and make everything that is done there to be done and said prayerfully as well. So be it. Amen. Would you please be seated? And may we be prayerful together. O oh Lord, how a Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. And we are grateful, O oh God, as your children to gather here on this very first day to remember Jesus' entry in Jerusalem. We are glad to remember his entrance into the temple 
and his instruction about it being a house of prayer. We are grateful to pray in this house of prayer. We are grateful, O oh God, to embrace each other and to share each other's burdens, each other's prayers. We are grateful to dedicate ourselves once again to be willing to be the answers to other persons' prayers as well. We are grateful to renew, to renew once again our commitment that we will measure everything we do here in this place and when we're together by prayerful ways. I thank you for these, my friends, who have gathered here to lift up before you their own individual prayers, those about rejoicing and thanksgiving, and those whether are petitions because of the need of your intervention in their lives and situations. Help us never to grow weary in well-doing. Help us never to shrink from praying to you. And even when we forget, help us to remember that you never leave us or forsake us. Help us to walk daily with you and to invite others to do the same. During this week, help us to remember the words of Jesus and the transformation that happened to his followers because they believed, and the transformation that happened to children who had been marginalized because of their lot and place in that society. Help us to be inclusive, not only here, not only as a congregation, but as we include other persons who may be different than we are in our daily walk of life. Forgive us for, pray, for, forgive us for being impatient. Forgive us, O oh God, for not being forgiving. And as you forgive us, help us to forgive others as well. We are distressed because of the political situations in our country. We pray, dear God, for peace, understanding, and that we all might Remember that we are Americans on this soil in which we claim. Give us your grace this day that we might not just keep it, but give it to others. And Lord, I pray that you would hear the prayers of these, your people, who bring them diligently and faithfully to this prayerful gathering that when they depart from here, their steps might be lighter, their hearts might be singing, and they will have a fresh and new outlook, having been in your presence. Now, as we keep the silence of this room, we lift up our prayers to you. And Lord, we cherish the words of Jesus. We cherish that he taught his followers to pray and what to pray about. So we, like them, would pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to God most high. Let us give thanks. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is right for us to give thanks and praise to you, God, in all times and places. As we gather in this house of prayer, we give you thanks for the stories of Jesus. We give you thanks not only for the stories, but his wise words that guide our footsteps as his followers. We are grateful to gather at this table. We are not worthy to be here, but Jesus has invited us, and it's through his worthiness, his invitation, that we feel like we belong. Help us, when we depart from here, to reach out with that same invitation to others. Thank you for these gifts, this gift of fresh bread and new wine. Help us to be the body of Christ present in this, our world. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. be seated. Here at the table, we remember that Passover meal. We remember when Jesus was in the upper room with his disciples, where Jesus took the bread, blessed and broke the bread, and passed it among his disciples, saying, this is my body, which is broken for you. At that same supper, Jesus took yet one more cup of wine and said, this cup is the new covenant in my life's blood. But my friends, as often as you eat this bread and you drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let us declare the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ, is, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ will come again. You need not be a member of this or any church to participate, simply a willingness to follow this in the footsteps of Jesus' teachings. When you receive a morsel of bread, we would ask that you would eat it in your own timing, symbolic of your individual relationship with God through Jesus. You'll receive a cup of juice, and once everyone is seated, we'll partake together. If you'd like one that's already open, there are several. And if you're in need of gluten-free bread, there is some on the wooden tray that's in the front. Let us celebrate this table together.
For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let us pray together. Almighty God, giver of all good things, we thank you for feeding us with the bread of life. We thank you for your love and your care and for uniting us with the company of all your faithful people and the gift of eternal life. We now offer ourselves to serve you in the world. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Amen. All who are willing and able, would you please rise for the benediction. come for us to leave this place. Guide us and protect us and lead us in thy grace. Wherever life may take us as we go our separate ways, help us share with others the things we've shared today. May the peace of God, the Father, and the love of Christ His Son guide us in the days of men and strengthen us each one. May the blessings of the Spirit Peace, my friends, be led in joy to serve the Lord.